Now, let us discuss some of the phenomena due to refraction of light. There are many phenomena that we can see in our day-to-day -day life which we can connect with refraction of light. So the first phenomena that we usually observe during night time is twinkling of stars. Twinkling of stars. We see that the, if we observe uh, at the sky, uh, we see that the stars twinkle. Okay, they twinkle. So, it is not because the stars actually twinkle, it is because of the change in the refractive index of the atmosphere which is lying between the star and the observer, that means us. For, for example, this is an observer who is looking at the stars. In between the star and the observer, we have got the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is such that as we move towards the ground, towards the earth's surface, the refractive index increases. Or as we move upward, the refractive index decreases. So due to this continuous change in refractive index, the path of the light that is coming from this star will change. Okay, it will change because of the continuous change in the refractive index. That is, since the refractive index is increasing as we move towards the earth surface, so the light will be bending towards the normal. Okay, normal I have not shown here. That means it is bending towards the normal. Now we know that. That is why the stars seems to be twinkling. Okay, and the actual position of the star is this, but the apparent position of the star seems to be this. Okay, for us light must travel in straight line. So, for us light must travel in straight line. So, for us the position of the star is this, and the actual position of the star is this. So, this. Continuous change in refractive index causes the stars to twinkle. There is another phenomena uh, that can be explained by uh, refraction of light. It is bending of an object, of an object, uh, bending of an object that is immersed in water. You can see that if we have a stick that is uh, immersed in water by making some angle, with the water, uh, it is not perpendicular, but maybe some angle with the water. Okay, we, it appears that the stick is bent. Okay, it appears that the stick, the stick is bent. So, this is the actual length of the stick, but for us, as if there is an observer here, if there is an observer here, mm. for example, if there is an observer here, Okay, then for this observer, the end position of this stick will appear to be here. Okay, this is B, no? For the observer, the position of the B will be this. Okay, for the observer, the position of the B, that is the end position of the stick, will be this. So, as a result, the stick will appear to be bent for the observer O. Okay, so this is another phenomena of refraction of light. Now let us move towards another concept called total internal reflection. It is a very important phenomenon. So this uh, total internal reflection, what do you mean by total internal reflection? Let's try to understand. For example, I have got two medium, one is air, another is water. The density of the air is mu one and it is a rarer medium and the density of water is mu2 which is a denser medium water is a denser medium that means mu2 is greater than mu1 now if this is an object and light is coming from this object for example this is a small light source okay and it is emitting light then if the light is going straight so it, it will undergo no refraction it will go straight there will be no bending. Okay, we all know that when the light is when the light goes perpendicular to the interface, this is the interface. Okay, this is air, this is water, and this is the interface. 
So at the air water interface, if the light strikes perpendicularly, then there will be no refraction. But if we see this ray, ray OB, it is going like this and as it is in denser medium at first, now here it is moving in the rarer medium. So it is bending away from the normal. As we all know that when the light goes from denser medium to rarer medium, it bends away from the normal. Now if I increase this angle of incidence slightly more, initially the angle of incidence was this, I am increasing the angle of incidence as this. Okay. If you see this ray OC, for OC, the, the ray is getting more bent, isn't it? As we increase the angle of incidence, the angle of refraction also increases. But at some point of time, if we further increase the angle of incidence, you can see the ray OH, if you see this ray OH, okay, if you see this ray OH, this one, if you see this ray, okay, uh, this OH ray, it is not going to the rarer medium, but it is moving along the interface. That means for the incident ray OH, the refracted ray is perpendicular to the normal. This is the normal and this is the refracted ray. This ray is not moving into the rarer medium, but it is moving along the interface. Okay. So this angle of incidence for which the angle of the refraction is 90 degree, it is called as critical angle. So critical angle is the angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degree. So if we see here this one, if we see this angle, this angle, this angle is will be called as the critical angle because I see for example the critical angle I am denoting by IC. So critical angle is the angle of incidence for which the angle of refraction is 90 degree. Okay, you can see this is 90 degree. HD is the refracted ray. Now if we further increase the angle of incidence, for example in this case, if we further increase the angle of incidence after this way, it is slightly distorted. If we further increase the angle of incidence, what will happen? For example, this one. Okay. In this case, the this is the incident ray OD. The refracted ray will be coming back to the same medium. That means the ray is like reflecting back. Okay. In this case, the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle. In this cases, the refracted ray will come back to the same medium. This phenomena is called as the total internal reflection. So, total internal reflection is a phenomena where if the incident ray is more than the angle of incidence, uh, if the incident ray is greater than the critical angle, then the refracted ray gets uh, or the refracted ray comes back to the same medium or it seems like the refracted ray is reflecting in the same medium okay for this condition so this is called as total internal reflection so for total internal reflection to occur two things must be satisfied one is the light must go from denser medium to rarer medium this is the denser medium water this is the rarer medium air so light must move from denser medium to rarer medium and the second condition is the angle of incidence must be greater than the critical angle this is condition the angle of incidence must be greater than critical angle then only total internal reflection will occur otherwise it will not so this condition these two conditions are to be fulfilled for total internal reflection to occur so uh, so this was about your uh, total internal reflection. Now let's see how does the Snell's law changes in case of total internal reflection. Now you can see from Snell's law what you can write sin i by sin r is equal to mu 1 by mu 2. Now when angle of incidence i is equal to critical angle then the angle of reflection is 90 degree. So putting i as ic and r as 90 degree you can see here what will get this uh, become equal to 2 mu 1 will be equal to sin ic by sin 90 and 90 is 1 so 2 mu 1 
is equal to sin IC. Now we know that 2 mu1 is equal to 1 by 1 mu2. So sin IC can be written as 1 by 1 mu2. Okay. So this formula is very important for numerical purpose. So let's see one numerical based on this formula. Uh, if the critical angle is 45 degree, okay, what is the value of refractive index of the medium? So critical angle, so sin IC is uh, 45 degree, so IC is 45 degree. If I put here, mu will be equal to 1 by sin 45. So you can calculate the uh, value of uh, the refractive index of the medium. Okay. So in the next section, I will be discussing some phenomena related to total internal reflection. So we have got several phenomena that can be explained based on total internal reflection. So first phenomena is the working of a poroprism. So poroprism are nothing but right angle isosceles prism. Right angle isosceles prism means uh, a prism which is right angle and whose two sides are equal. So if you see this prism. Uh, these two ends are equal so if light is incident like this it will be reflected by the hypotenuse it undergoes total internal reflection at these points okay the light undergoes total internal reflection at these two points and it is getting reflected back reflected like this similarly so an object a b will appear as this okay so it is this the direction of the object is altered by 90 degree. Similarly, if you see uh, in the second case, in this case, same. This is the incident light. Okay, it is striking these two points. It is striking these two points, and again it is striking the light is again striking these two points. So they are undergoing total internal reflection at these points. So this circular point represents the position of total internal reflection. Okay, and after reflecting, the light is coming like this. So this object AB, so this object AB will appear completely inverted. Okay, 180 degree inverted. Similarly, for this prism. Okay, so these are the application of uh, total internal reflection using poro prism or right angle isosceles prism. Another application of total internal reflection is air bubbling shining inside water. We know that air bubble inside water shines it is because since the incident light striking at the bubble surface becomes greater than the critical angle in that case the, this incident light gets reflect, reflected in the same medium that is water and the bubble shines because inside bubble there is air and outside bubble there is water so light is going from water to air that means denser medium to rarer medium so it is getting back into the Denser medium that is water, so it uh, it appears to be shining. Air bubble appears to be shining. Similarly, sparkling of a diamond can be explained using total internal refraction. For diamond, the critical angle is 24.4 degree, and if the incident angle is greater than this angle, then the diamond will shine. Similarly, another phenomena, natural phenomena, is mirage. Mirage is an optical illusion of water. Observed in deserts or off road when the image of an object seems inverted. We, we have we all have experienced this in hot uh, during summer conditions when the road is extremely hot, when the road surface is extremely hot, then it appears that there is water somewhere far. Okay. It appears that there is water uh, at some far distance. For example, if there is a tree. Uh, and if this is an observer, for the observer it will appear that the tree has caught an image and it only happens when there is water. So it it happens because of uh, the phenomena of total internal refraction. And you can see that uh, this air medium uh, has very has different refractive index. Uh, and near the surface the refractive index of air is less because air is very hot okay and near the surface but as you move up the refractive index increases okay because the air becomes cooler and cooler as you move up from the surface so air in contact with the ground is warmer but air far away from the ground is cooler now 
see the top of the tree, if you see the top of the tree, light comes from denser medium, that is from the up, upper portion of the um, atmosphere uh, towards the ground. So, light is coming like this and since the, since the incident angle is greater than the critical angle, the, uh, the light is getting reflected back in the same medium and if it reaches the eye of the observer, the observer will see an image of the tree which is inverted and for him uh, it will it, it seem like there is uh, some water and we are and, and he is uh, observing the image of this tree in this water. So this is an optical illusion that usually happens during uh, hot conditions, okay, in deserts or in hot roads. So these are some of the phenomena of total internal reflection.